The graph below shows the relationship between carbon dioxide uptake and light intensity in two plant species, A and B. One of these species is adapted to living in full sun, while the other is adapted to living in the shade. Hey, it's Mr. W. Take out your Biomania FRQ learning journal. The link is below if you don't already have one. It's time for Dinky Bio Review. This question is part of the Biomania AP Bio preparation system on sciencemusicvideos.com and also available as an app for Apple and Android. Please pause, write your answer, and then hit play to see my answer. Let's talk in a general way about how to read this graph. The y-axis is the amount of carbon dioxide uptake. It's being measured in a way that controls for the size of the plant because it's comparing the volume of carbon dioxide that's being taken up, that's the numerator, with the surface area of the plant, which is the denominator. The x-axis is light intensity. It's the amount of light energy per second, that's what a watt is, per unit of area. Now, let's look at how to answer this question. The first part is to explain what processes can be measured by measuring carbon dioxide uptake. The first process that you can measure is photosynthesis. That's because CO2 is absorbed during photosynthesis, where carbon dioxide is an input for formation of carbohydrates like glucose. The second process that you can measure is cellular respiration. But this is tricky because cellular respiration on its own would cause CO2 uptake to be a negative value. In other words, cellular respiration causes negative uptake. Where CO2 is taken up into a plant by photosynthesis, it's released by plants during cellular respiration. Most of the values on this graph show the interaction between respiration and photosynthesis. The exception is this point over here, where light intensity is zero. At that point, all you see is respiration causing negative uptake as CO2 is released. By measuring CO2 uptake, you're also measuring growth. If more CO2 is being taken up by a plant than is being released by a plant, then the plant is growing. That surplus carbon dioxide is gonna be absorbed during the carbon fixation phase of the Calvin cycle of photosynthesis, and it's gonna be made into more plant material. On the other hand, if the plant is producing more CO2 than it's taking up, that means that respiration is outpacing photosynthesis. In that case, the plant is losing mass, just like how you or I lose mass every time we exhale as we release carbon dioxide into the air. Let's look at part two. Species B lives in the shade. How do you know? It's indicated by a couple of things. First of all, species B reaches its maximum rate of CO2 uptake at much lower light intensity than species A. That's an adaptation for living in the shade. If species B were a house plant, it would be the kind that doesn't have to be right by the window. It's shade adapted. It can survive with lower light intensity. Second, you know that B is a shade plant because its CO2 uptake is lower than A under high light intensities. This suggests that this species, species B, is unable to make good use of increased sunlight. Part three, species B has a lower rate of respiration than species A. And you can tell that by looking at this part of the graph. At a light intensity of zero, plant B is putting out 0.05 cubic decimeters of CO2 per hundredth of a meter squared. Now compare this to plant A, which is putting out 0.1 cubic decimeters per hundredth of a meter squared. In other words, the respiration rate of plant B is half of that of plant A. Part four is asking you to describe the significance that a low rate of respiration could have for a shade plant in its natural habitat. Well, let's think about this. The amount by which photosynthesis exceeds respiration determines the growth rate of a plant. Plant B is adapted to living in shady light conditions. Because of low light intensities in the shade, plant B is going to have a reduced rate of photosynthesis. There's just not a lot of light available to drive photosynthesis in the shade. So as an adaptation to the circumstance, plant B has a low rate of respiration. That results in less glucose being broken down, and thus there's more glucose available for growth. 
to get ready for the AP exam, you should be doing many questions like this every day. And you can do this using the Biomania AP exam preparation system that'll get you a four or a five on this year's AP bio exam. It's on sciencemusicvideos.com and it's also a phone app on Apple and Android. Download the app for free and then you unlock all the content with an in-app purchase. If you have a question or a comment, please leave it below. Join me for live review sessions. The schedule is at sciencemusicvideos.com at Mr. W Live. See you there. Stay safe. Practice social distancing. I'll see you at the next question of the day. Thank you. Light reactions happening in leaves making oxygen, NADPH and ATP through a solar charge current of electricity converted into chemical energy. Thank you.